In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to explore the definition of a radian measure, and then we're going to be using some conversions from a radian to a degree and to degree to radian. So this is the true conversions from radians to degrees and vice versa. So first of all, what is a radian measure? Well, they start off this discussion by saying if you're using degrees, degrees is a fairly appropriate way of measuring angles when using trigonometry or many real-world problems such as surveying and navigation. But for other applications that we see in the real world, that's not very convenient because they give an idea here, using an angle measured in degrees poses a significant problem. A degree has no relationship to any linear measure. So we have inch to degrees or inch degrees. That has no relative meaning to any of our practical applications. So we circumvent this problem by measuring angles in radians. Now radians is going to have a very strong connection to a linear measurement. So when we talk about radians, we're going to go back to the unit circle here, or a circle. And the most simple way I can describe a radian measure is, in any circle, all circles have a radius. So we measure the radian measures, angle measures, by the length of the radius. If we were to make an arc length, and this is a linear measurement, if we find the arc length, which you're using S, if S has an arc length of one radius, so if I have, let me do a separate circle out here, and if I have a circle that has a radius of two, and I simply mark off a distance from the initial side, two units long, so we're talking about arc length. If this is two units long, it is simply said to be an angle, and theta is what they're using, theta, theta would equal one radian, which they abbreviate as one rad, which stands for radian, which in my mind stands for it's equivalent to the length of one radius along the edge of a circle. So a radian measure is basically telling you how many radii you placed around the outside edge of the circle. So if I went two radii, then I would have to go another distance of two units, which this is not a very good depiction of where that would be, but the general idea I wanted to get across, if I go two lengths of the radius, then I'd have an angle that is two radians, or two rad. So the first thing that we want to tie this to is the idea of a linear measurement, and that's what this key concept on a radian measure is providing. It says the measure theta, so if we're measuring an angle, theta is just the, the symbol that we use to measure the angle, in radians of a central angle of a circle, central angle simply means that the vertex must be at the center of the circle, it is equal to the ratio of the length of the intercepted arc s, so here's that linear measurement. It's the length of how many radii around the edge of the circle, and they call that the intercepted arc S, to the radius of the circle, which is R. So they have this, and symbols are saying theta is nothing more than the calculation of the arc length divided by R. So if we had an arc length of 8, if we measure out an arc length of 8, wherever that might be, and our radius was 2, we would be able to say that is 4 radians. So we take 8 divided by 2, which is 4, and that's going to give us theta, which means it's 4 radians. It's the length of 4 radii around the outside edge of the circle. Linear measurement, we're connecting it to the distance around the outside edge of the circle, which is really based on circumference. So what they're saying in this last statement is, what I already pointed out, if the measure of the, if the central angle has a measure of 1 radian of its intercepted arc, that is really one radian is when s is equal to r. If s is the same as r, if our arc length is the same as the length of the radius, that is one radian. So, take away from this discussion that a radian measure is the length of a radius around the outside edge of the circle. It's a part of the circumference. And when we know what part of that circumference is, that's how we discuss a radian measure. So it says, notice as long as the arc of this arc length s and the radius r are measured in using the same linear units, that this ratio of s divided by r is unitless. So if the arc length is, for instance, 8 inches, if we go around the circle 8 inches, and then we divide it by the length of the radius, which I use as 2 inches, they're saying this is a unitless measurement because it's just 4. The units, inches, inches, cancel. So what they do is they put in the word rad to signify that, that would be an eight lengths of the radius around the outside edge of the circle, whether it's measured in inches, yards, feet, that really doesn't matter. So what they do is they could put in the word radian, but they simplify that using the abbreviated rad, which stands for radians, which to me, again, tells me there are four radii that went around the edge of the circle.
So we connect that back to the unit circle a little bit farther. Um, the central angled, um, if we look at this first circle that they give us, they're trying to identify the fact that if we go all the way around the outside edge of the circle, that would be the complete circumference of the circle. Now, bottom line is when we calculate circumference, we should have this 2 pi r formula mem memorized. So if we're going to do the entire circumference of the circle, that circumference would be 2 pi r. So that's what they have here. The entire rotation would be 2 pi r units of measurement, of linear measurement around the outside of the circle. But if we want to convert that into a radian measure, then we have to divide it by the length of the radius, and they throw in the radius here. But as you can see, the radii would then cancel, which leaves us with just 2 pi radians. So one rotation is always equivalent to the circumference around the circle. And the circumference around the circle is 2 pi. Again, if I look at this R, I think it stands for radii. It tells me how many radii it takes to get around the circle. There's always about 6.28 radii if you go around the circle once. So this 2, point, or 2 pi radii really stands for radians. In this example is what I like to think of. Around the circle once, 2 pi radii, which is 2 pi radians. So if we break that down, we say, well, what about a half a rotation then? Well, half a rotation would be half of that circumference. And if we go around it once, it's 2 pi. So that means halfway around would just be pi. And that's why they signify a half a rotation with pi radians. Just breaking down the circle farther, if we do a fourth rotation, that means we only want a fourth of that total circumference around the circle, which is pi halves. Or we can take half of pi halves. If pi is half of a way around, then a fourth of a way around is half of a half, or pi halves. And finally, a sixth of a rotation means we want one-sixth of the entire circumference, and one-sixth of the entire circumference reduces down to pi thirds. So we have some unit conversions here that we're working on. The base one that you need to know is, and I think we already know, that in one rotation there are 2 pi r uh, units of measurement, which are uh, the idea behind circumference, which if we take out the r and replace it with radian, because we're dividing the r's out and we're applying the, the unit measurement of radians, we got one rotation is 2 pi, half a rotation is pi, and so on. So we're going to use these ideas to get some unit converters. Because 2 pi radians and 360 both correspond to one complete revolution, so those are our base benchmarks, you can write 360 equals 2 pi radians, or what they typically will use, since we can put it in lower terms, rather than 360 and 2, they go to 180 and pi radians. So this is what we're going to use for many of our um, conversions. These are the statements right here that if we want to convert back and forth, this is the one that I stick to, 180 degrees equals pi radians. So here's your key concept. You can use these unit multipliers to help you um, convert back and forth between different measurements. So let's take a look at this in application or in process. So we have a 210 degrees, you want to change to radians. I obviously want to get rid of degrees, so I want the degree measurement on the bottom. So I know that in this 180 degree rotation, there are pi radians. Now the degrees will cancel, and we got 2 pi, or 210 pi over 180. Now you're always responsible for simplifying these fractions. So the first thing I see right away is they're both divisible by 10, and then I can see that they're both divisible by 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7, so I got 7 pi. 18 divided by 3 is 6, so it's 7 pi 6. So there's our equivalency in radians. Um, next problem, we got a negative 60 degrees. Again, I want to get rid of degrees, so I've got to have the degrees on the bottom. The conversion between degrees and radians is 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. The degrees will cancel, and we'll be left with negative 60 pi radians all over 180. So we'll get rid of the tens, and then the six will go into 18, so we'll have a negative pi thirds radians. In the next example, we have four pi thirds. Four pi thirds, I want to get rid of, and this is in radians, so if I want to get rid of radians, I have to multiply by the unit multiplier of. I want the radians on the bottom, and their degrees on the top. On 180 degrees is pi radians. So we've got to be a little bit careful with this. Um, I'm going to rewrite this 4 pi thirds radians. 
so that it matches up with the fraction bar, we got 4 pi thirds radians. So the radians are going to cancel, the pi's are going to cancel, the 3 will go into 186 feet times, and we got 40, or 4 times 60, which is 240 degrees. Okay, so it's a matter of using unit multipliers to help us get rid of the radian or degree measurements as we want. The next one is a negative pi 6. I'm going to put the negative up with the pi 6, and this is in radians. I want to take that times the unit multiplier. I want to get rid of radians, so I want the pi radians to be on the bottom, and I want the 180 degree equivalency to be on the top. So our radians will cancel, and our pi's will cancel, and we'll have a negative 100. Well, I'll just we'll take the 6 into 180. That goes in there 30 times. 6 into itself once. So we got a negative 30 degrees. So there's four quick examples of using unit multipliers to simplify um, and convert back and forth radians and degrees. Um, typically, you want to leave our answers with pi in them. You don't want to use your pi key in your calculator, so stay off of that, stay away from it, and just use your exact answers.